Okay, good morning. This is uh, Dr. Pennington again. And in this video, I would like to talk to you about another. Oh, sorry, that was just my email. Uh, apparently, I'm popular today. Uh, what was I saying? So, yeah, anyway, this video is about another aspect of solution concentration, which is the concept of dilution. And before we get into a natural sample question, I want to give you an analogy to what we're talking about when we consider dilution. And probably the simplest way to illustrate this analogy is to say, let's say you go to the grocery store, all right, and you buy, here's my wonderful artistic rendition of a can of soup, S for soup, not Superman, but maybe super soup. Uh, anyway, never mind. And this can is it's condensed all right let's say oh dear the the label's gone on a bit too long but anyway this is a sample of condensed soup <clears throat> and you, you guys have all seen condensed soup before it's just like normal soup except it's in a smaller can the idea being that you have to then put water into it after you have um, opened the can and put it in your pan so if we continue the wonderful artistic skills here all right, this is your pan. All right, a $600 pan from Williams and Sonoma, that's what it looks like. And so you guys know the instructions for your pan. In fact, box, let me, let me redo this one. This, let me do one that's going to make it easier for us to see actually what's, what's going on. All right, here's our $20 pan from Walmart. That's, that's better. So you pour into the can your soup, all right, and let's say this is our soup. And let's say you've got vegetable soup. And so in that soup, there's bits, all right. Now, we're hoping if this is vegetable soup, those, those bits are vegetables. And then the instructions tell you to add in a can of water, all right. So when we do that, the volume then goes to about twice what it was before. So let me see if I can remove this now. Oh, I'm destroying the pan as well, but well. Uh, okay, so the pan magically reappears. All right. And I'm going to erase my, my vegetable bits here as well, because what happens to all those vegetable bits when, uh, when we add in that extra water? Well, nothing really happens to them. They don't go anywhere. So the the amount of pieces of vegetable in there don't change. But if the volume increases, then what that means is they get more spread around. All right? Just like so. So it's the same number of vegetable pieces that we had before, but they're just in a larger volume. So the idea being, in this case, this was a smaller volume, and the pieces were more concentrated. When you put the can into here and add in the water, you double the volume, and so the concentration of these bits becomes less because they get further apart. So the idea is, when you're doing a dilution, if, you've, if the volume of your solution goes up, the concentration, in this case shown by molarity, the molarity goes down, or the concentration goes down. Um, and that's what we're doing whenever we talk about dilution. All right. If we were to think about the other way and we were to concentrate something, if we were to decrease our volume, the, the amount of stuff in there wouldn't change. Those pieces of stuff, whatever they are, would just become closer together. So it would become more concentrated. So the important thing is, whatever you do to the volume, the opposite happens to the concentration. All right. Okay, so that's, that's an analogy to what we're actually doing here. And before we look at this actual question, let me just guide your attention to the equation here. This is the dilution equation, you know, extremely important. M1V1 equals M2V2. The idea being that molarity times volume equals number of moles. And the number of moles of soup here is exactly the same in the condensed versus the diluted form. Okay, so the number of the number of bits of vegetables here is the same here as it was here. They're just more spread out here. 
and that's equal and that we're saying that's equal to the number of moles so before we dilute and after we dilute the number of moles is the same so we can set the molarity and volume equal to each other and hence come up with the dilution equation so let's say we have this question here all right imagine a 10 mil sample of concentrated hydrochloric acid which is 12 molar what will the new concentration of this acid sample be what will the new concentration be if this acid sample is diluted to 100 mils? All right, so let's, um, let's make sure we understand the question and pick out the important points. Well, we have a volume here. We have the word concentrated, but that doesn't really tell us much. Although it does tell us that that concentration is 12 molar, and that's pretty concentrated. The question is asking, what will the new concentration be if this acid sample is diluted to 100 mils. So the key thing here is to know which numbers to put with which. On each side of the equation there's going to be a molarity and a volume and then on the other side a molarity and a volume too. So the question is telling us we have a sample of acid at a particular volume and it's got a particular concentration. So the question is asking, when we dilute this volume to 100 mils, what happens to our concentration? Well, let's just think qualitatively before we do anything quantitative. If you have an original volume of 10 mils and you dilute it with water to 100 mils, you can see your volume is going up. And because your volume is going up, we said your concentration is going to go down. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense, because in this 10 mils, I have all the bits of acid that make a 12 molar solution. In the dilute solution, all those bits of acid are still going to be there. They're just going to be present in a much larger volume, so they're going to be more spread apart. So now, how do we plug all this into this equation? All right. Well, it's kind of up to you as to how exactly you want to put this in, but um, the way I like to do it is to say, M1, V1 correspond to my concentrated molarity and volume, and M2, V2 correspond to my dilute concentration and volume. The fact is it doesn't matter which way you do it, because you'll get the same answer either way, um, but you just want to make sure you remember which goes where, so you don't, say for example, put the 100 mils with the 12 molar. And that comes from being able to read the question properly. So when it says a 10 mil sample, which is 12 molar, you should be able to tell that that volume goes with that molarity. We're asking for the new concentration, in this case it's going to be M2 that we're looking for, and if we're given that new volume. So why don't we just uh, rearrange our equation for M2? So, you know, not much of a challenge really. We know that M2 is going to be equal to M1V1 over V2. All right. So, M1, we know our M1 here, we said this is our concentrated side, is 12 molar. All right. And I'm just going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do things properly the way I should, 12 moles per liter. The volume of this sample is 10 mils. All right, and because I have liters here, let's, let's put this into liters as well. So, how many... How many liters is 10 mils? Well, it's 0 0.01 liters. 0 0.01 liters. All right. And um, so I have these two. M1 is this. V1 is this. Then on the bottom of all this, notice my liters from here is already on the bottom, but my V2 is going to be down here, is 100 mils. All right, now 100 mils, as you would imagine, is 0.1 liters. I know this looks kind of weird, but when you cancel out two liters, then you're left with moles per liter, which is what the units need to be in your answer anyway. So what we have is 12.0 times 0.01 divided by 0.1. All right. Uh, so if we just if we just do that calculation, 12 times this. Uh, let's see. Let me just get my calculator out just to make sure that we do this right. Whilst I'm doing this, one thing that I do want you to recognise though is that 
the volume has changed by a factor of 10 here. You've gone from 10 mils to 100, so your volume has increased by a factor of 10. Because of the way this equation is set up, the opposite thing should happen to your concentration. So if the volume goes up by a factor of 10, we know the concentration is going to go down, but it'll go down by the same factor. So what is this concentration divided by 10? Well, that new concentration is 1.2 molar, and that is what we should get. All right. So let's just see if that, it sh uh, if that actually is what we do get. So what we end up with here is 0.12 moles per 0.1 liters, giving us an answer of 1.2 moles per liter, just exactly what we said here. So the important thing that we can see here is that the volume increased by a factor of 10. All right. And, oh, there's my email again. And so the concentration, according to what we had here, should decrease or should have decreased by the equivalent factor, which it did. All right. Um, when we do these sorts of questions, this sort of thing is always going to be the case. Yeah, there'll be cases where you don't have nice round numbers like this, but um, otherwise you can always use this equation no matter what the numbers are. All right. Anyway, that's how we do dilution. That's how we use M1. V1 is M2. V2, the dilution equation. Hopefully this analogy helped things out a little bit, and um, hopefully that makes things a little bit easier. All right. Thank you.